You mentioned that Bumble's founder, Whitney Wolf Hurd, is tied with her, but we saw a dip in her fortune this year, an over $200 million dip. Can you explain that? Yeah, so this is the second big dip in her fortune that um, has happened to her. She was at one point the youngest self-made billionaire, but that only lasted a short 10 months. Um, Bumble's IPO was very successful, but the share price has continued to drop. And I think from last year it's dropped, I think it's like 30%. And from its IPO, I think it's about 80. So it's pretty significant. And she just keeps off, she just keeps shedding off that wealth continuously. Some of the names we've talked about so far, Rihanna, Kylie Jenner, Taylor Swift, are mostly household names. But I'm curious if there are any newcomers on this list. Yeah, so we have three newcomers and they're all in their 30s. There is Christina Cachopo, Iman Abu Said, and Julia Cheek. And they're all entrepreneurs. They're, they all founded their own companies. Um, Cassiopo founded a security and automation company, and it was valued by private investors at $1.6 billion. Um, Abu Said, on the other hand, founded a healthcare staffing company, which is kind of like a LinkedIn for nurses. It basically connects nurses with openings in hospitals or in the healthcare industry. And the company was also valued at one6 after its last funding round um, last year. And then there's Julia Cheek, who's 39, and she founded this company called Everly Health, which makes at-home wellness and health testing kits. And right now they're sold online, they're sold at CVS, Target, and I think they had, I think it's 250 million in revenue for last year. That's great. So I think the opposite of newcomers would be drop offs. And we saw a few this year on this list. I want you to speak to them. And I guess I'm specifically wondering, did they drop off because their fortunes declined? Or did the competition just get more fierce this year? Yeah, so we have a little bit of everything with the drop offs. We have one drop off who didn't drop off the self made women's list, but no, but no longer makes the under 40 club because she turned 40. <laughs> and that's Emma Greed, who co-founded Good American with Khloe Kardashian. Um, she's still on the list at 320 million, but no longer in this ranking. But we do have some that have fallen off entirely. And that's tennis player Maria Sharapova, who didn't make the 225 million cut, as well as as well as Rachel Drury. She co-founded, I don't know, Daily Harvest, which is a meal delivery service. And it was doing extremely well. It was valued at 1.1 billion last year, but they had this huge, massive recall of their lentil and leeks product. And it really brew sale at sales and, and caused her to drop off the list entirely. When you're compiling this list, I mean, just the title, The Richest Self-Made Women, I'm sure you came across many inspiring stories, especially when you uh, were covering the youngest under 40. Can you share one with us? Yeah, I think it's really exciting to see how these women have all built um, their companies from scratch or almost from scratch. But I think one that really stood out to me is Rihanna. She has a self-made score of 10. So she really did build her entire empire on her own. And she is the only billionaire in the under 40 with the highest self-made score. So I think that really speaks volumes of what she's done. When you're looking at this list and specifically the youngest, so everyone 40 and below, if you could describe this part of the list in one word, what would that word be? I think I would describe them as driven because it's it's so hard to amass such a big fortune and they've all done it and they con consistently land themselves on the list. So I think it's it's definitely impressive and, and worth mentioning. Gigi Zamora, thank you for joining me. Thank you for having me.